。行ってきます。ま、あ、やっほー、やっほー。ねえねえ。ん向こうの景色はどんな感じうーん。まあまあかな。うーん。そっか。うん。でも、楽しいよ。<笑>私も、おやすみだよ。For the vast majority of us living in the West, we were first introduced to Dalko near the end of 2014 with the extremely popular music video Me Me Me. Combined with amazing visuals, a cautionary tale for everyone invested in Japanese media, and an incredible three act music produced by Tetaloid, Me 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 gained cult status in the anime community. A lot of this attention then turned towards the enigmatic vocalist Dalko, who also wrote the lyrics. Her soft whisper rap caught many listeners off guard. Then a few months later, the music video Girl serves as a kind of like a sequel to Me Me Me. This time, the music is at the forefront and really demonstrates her skills as a rapper singer. The interest soon led to questions Who is Dalko? <laughs> So, a while back, I was lurking on her subreddit and came across this post. Someone was asking for recommendations for artists like Dalko to listen to. This user responds For older Dalko stuff, have a listen to these artists. For newer Dalko, any generic J pop singer. And as a Dalko fan, I would agree. Dalko has lost her sound. To get to the bottom of this, let's go back to 2012 where her career began. Dalko began uploading songs on Nico Nico Doga in 2012 after being an avid user of that site herself. More specifically, she wanted to do rap singing on the Nico rap category. Her endeavor soon paid off, and at the age of 15, she was signed to an independent record label called Low Hi Who in her first year of high school. During this period, she continued to release music without showing her face. She released three albums, all of which you can listen to on Spotify. In an interview, she attributes a lot of her interest in music to her father. She says that Sheena Ringo made a big impact on her when she was little. We will go back on this influence in a little bit. In 2013, Dalko collaborated with M Flow for a theme song for、uh, this movie. And in 2014, her song Fog was used in the world of Kanako. And as we all know, Mimi Mi was released that year too, but this one music video did not lead to her mainstream success. The music video was not E for everyone, let's just say. Also, during this time, she is still in high school, limiting her activities as a rap singer. 2015 is the year that Dalko signed to a major record label, Toys Factory. And released her self titled debut album. And for the first time, her fans finally saw what she looked like. Switching to a major label, more and more elaborate music videos were made for her singles. The visuals for them were amazing and attracted millions of views on YouTube. This led to the label pushing for a major album release in 2017 with Thank You Blue, which debuted at number 13 on the Oricon charts. The Japanese equivalent of iTunes and charted for 12 weeks. This is by far her most popular album with a mostly pop sound. I mean, Dalko barely raps in most of these songs. I assume that the album was hoping that she would go towards more pop than rap during this period. One of the major influences over her music is Shina Ringo, a Madonna figure in the Japanese music industry during the 2000s. We see this influence in her 2017 digital EP Charm Point, where she is at a point in her career where she has just reached mainstream success. Her cover of Sheena's Kabuki Cho no Jo o demonstrates her own style over a rather nostalgic disco instrumental. I read from Zui Hitsu's translation of the lyrics. The song illustrates a young girl who goes to the Kabuki Cho, the entertainment and red light district in Shinjuku. And takes the place of her mother as the queen of the district. So, in Japan, high ranking kabuki actors are entertainers, much like musicians. 
In the song, Daoko likens herself to the young girl following the footsteps of Shina Ringo. I mean, her makeup here just screams Shina Ringo. It's clear that Daoko undergoes a reflection of her status and being propelled into the mainstream because that year, her label has placed her in a spot of attention. This allowed major collaborations with J-pop stars like Yasuyuki Okamura and Yonezu Kenshi. I would make the claim that the music video for Uchiyage Hanabi outpaced the film that it was made for. Around this time, Daoko's music gradually changed from rap into pop, a genre that Daoko is likely not used to performing. This pop sound carried over to her mostly underwhelming 2018 album Shiteki Ryoko. Skip ahead to the start of 2019, in the 69th Kohaku Utagasen, she performs Uchiage Hanabi, a song which was still very popular at that time. This was often noted as one of her worst live performances. She fails to read some notes, and could not time her breathing in some lines, and her choreography often gets in the way of her singing. As the song finishes, her reaction is heartbreaking. So 2019 has been a quiet year for Daoko as she continues to do songs for her Dragalia Lost collaboration. Also that year, she went on a few tours. In July, she announced on her Twitter that she will be starting her own private office. The reasoning for this is most likely a monetary one, as most celebrities have their own private office. At the same time though, it allows an artist to have more control over their work. A few months later, Daoko releases a new single titled Hajime Mashite no Kimochi wo, which was used as the ending song for the Kaguya-sama live action movie. When I first heard the song, I knew that the Daoko that most of us enjoy is back. Not just because she actually raps in this song, but it feels like Daoko was given the freedom to make a song the way she wanted. Just take her next single, Otogi no Machi, uh, suddenly this weird electronic dance music for some reason. Personally, not my favorite song, but I know Daoko wanted this song to sound like this. And most recently, at the making of this video, Another single called Ochara Ke Dayo shows Daoko with this new hairstyle dancing in a room by herself, strangely relevant to what's going on today. On her social network, she's been sharing some of her drawings, photography, and covers during this 2020 lockdown. and it's been pretty chill. The thing is, if you look at the comments of any Daoko related videos on YouTube, whether it be on her music videos or songs which features Daoko, there is a surprisingly large English speaking fan base. And I believe a lot of us agree that Daoko is slowly regaining her old sound back. Daoko is at her best when she's making music that she loves. And with her fourth album, Anima, coming out on the 24th of June, let's hope we'll see Dalko's triumphant return. Join me on the 24th for a live stream where we'll be having a little listening party when the album drops, so stay tuned. 
Dalco is one of my favorite artists and I knew that I would eventually make a video about her. Hopefully I have persuaded some of you guys to give her music a listen and let me know what you think. Drop a like and follow me on the Twitter. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.